In the early days of audio, the circuits of condenser microphones were based around vacuum tubes, like this one. Unfortunately, tubes require a lot of electrical voltage to operate, so those microphones had to be tethered to power supply boxes that were roughly the size of a toaster. As you can imagine, this was inconvenient in many situations, especially when you had numerous microphones in a session. To remedy this issue, a standard arose that allowed this power to come from the mixing consoles of the day and do away with those bulky power supplies. Phantom power, as it is now called, was introduced in the mid-1960s by none other than the high-end microphone company Neumann. These days, phantom power is represented by the symbol plus 48V. Although the earliest implementations of phantom power did provide 48 volts, contemporary microphone designs often operate on far less voltage. Regardless, the 48 volt nomenclature is still used regardless of the actual voltage of the device. Phantom power was designed for and is required to operate any condenser microphone, but is completely harmless to any dynamic microphones you may have. If these are the only kinds of mics you have, you can keep phantom power turned on all the time and not really worry about it. You also find that some small preamps and pedals for acoustic guitars, basses, and other instruments will accept phantom power through their XLR outputs so that the player doesn't have to rely on batteries or connect a power supply on stage. As you can probably guess, since phantom power is controlled with a switch, there are probably situations when we don't want it on. The most common warning is to not use phantom power with ribbon microphones. In truth, it usually won't damage a ribbon, but in some situations there is a possibility. Regardless, it is a precaution worth taking when you consider the rarity and value of many ribbons, especially vintage models. Another situation is if you need to connect the output of another mixer or effects unit into the microphone input on your mixer. Those devices are not designed to receive phantom power, and applying it to their outputs will shorten their lifespan. Recent advancements in technology have given rise to an exception to these rules. The well-known microphone company Royer released the world's first phantom-powered ribbon microphone in 2002. Currently, these products are beyond the budget of most audio beginners, but it's likely this technology will start showing up in more affordable products in the future. Phantom power is a basic utility that simply powers some of the technology that we use on stage and in the studio. By following these simple guidelines, you can safely use it in your productions.